how are you enhancing journalism, better living through data? We do everything from the very beginning, including interview sources, and all the way to the designing and then the programming of it. Whether it's by itself or with a huge investigation that we're also doing, we publish these web apps that allow people to sort of find themselves in the big investigations that we do. So there's all sorts of new ways of thinking about the act of the craft of journalism before the story is born. Separately, after the story is born, there's all sorts of ways that data can help understand the life of the story and even shape the life of the story. Slightly more subtle is modeling the audience. So one of the things we've been working on is how do you build models of the audience who engages with a story? How do you build models of what is the audience reading that's engaging with a particular section of content? When it comes to faster news, breaking news, how do you guys change gears and bring data journalism to bear on that and in a successful way? We spend a lot of time, uh, as much time as we can in a moving situation, trying to figure out what our audience is going to need next. And we try to think ahead. And it's really important because coding on deadline is a really tricky thing to do. Um, and so is the, the more uh, prescient we can be, the better off we are. Data journalism on deadline is really difficult um, because a lot of things that you would want time to say, call an expert and verify that you're not totally screwing this up or that you know there isn't some like critical thing that you don't know about. Um, we've done this once where we basically say we're not going to compete on the breaking news side because we can't do this well enough to our own satisfaction and we will come out with something in a month that we are totally confident with. We hear about these companies like Data Miner that are really helping news organizations to find out about um, news that's happening way before maybe their reporters know. Do you see yourselves using more and more of those kinds of data mining companies in the future, or are you going to do it all in-house? So I think um, there's always going to be a difficulty when using third-party data providers as an investigative journalist, simply because if, if there's something wrong and you have no way of like uh, repairing that, uh, you are going to be held accountable for that. Why is it so collaborative? Because I thought, aren't we in an industry of sort of Darwinian struggle for survival? And why is it that the data folks are so collaborative and, and happy? I think that's pretty cool. I think there's two things that's that are really cool. I think there's a spirit of openness. And I also think that there's, um, there's a, a little bit more of a spirit of mission. We're all trying to provide information to everybody. And yeah, we might want to do our story first, but in the end, we're all trying to inform and, and, and shed light on what's out there in, in government and elsewhere. We open source our code, but we also open source our practices. And something we have at ProPublica is called reporting recipes. And essentially, we write them whenever we feel like we have a story that a lot of people, a lot of journalists can benefit from uh, and save them tons of time from pouring over it like we did and say, OK, here are five things you need to know about this data set. And if you're investigating any city in America, here are the five numbers you should look at. And if you see these patterns, like you know now it's time for you to investigate.